Glory to God. Well, glory to God. My time has come so quickly. I want to, however, on this resurrection Sunday morning, join in with you and millions across the globe on a day like this. The greatest day in Christian celebration. A day of victory. A day when life triumphs over death, hell, and the grave. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You may please be seated. I congratulate you, pandemic or no pandemic, you're well-dressed in your resurrection regala. Your faces express the joy that is deep on the inside of your heart. The worship we have this morning and continue to have. The preparation that you went through to be here. The defiance of all laws of logic and otherwise. For you and I, it is still Resurrection Sunday. No greater day in history. No greater day in Christendom. And we have come out with raised hands lifted heads, open mouths to sing, to praise, and to celebrate the goodness of God. It's a day of reflection. It's a day of meditation. It's a day when we join with every nation in the face of the globe to reflect on what Jesus Christ did for all humanity, all seven billion of us. We are not standing alone. The heavenly throngs are looking down upon us. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost is with us. To you, my brothers and sisters, on the various platforms, Facebook, Zoom, and otherwise, we greet you. We are only just a breath away from each other and our Savior. No pandemic, no curfew, no government restriction, and we adhere to them as much as we can. But nothing can ever keep us at home, lying in our beds when we have been summoned to come and to express the joys of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I can guarantee us, you and I, having finished here today, we will never regret the cause to which we are gathered to celebrate over 2,000 years ago what one man, hallelujah, brought joy, victory, liberation, deliverance, causes the whole world now to rejoice in renewed life and sins forgiven. So I greet you today, and I greet this nation. I greet my brothers and sisters who are listening to us. I have some time today to listen over to last year's Resurrection Sunday worship and message. I had time to reflect, to hear voices, hear prayers, and to see faces and hands raised in heavenly places. I felt the more encouraged, empowered, and transfixed in the presence of my Savior. I want it, if you have them, turn your Bibles with me to a scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 7 through 9, and keep your markers there. We are celebrating this morning the power of the resurrection. 2,000 years ago, a man called Christ yielded himself to the death of the cross, taking the position of all of us in our world today, a position that requires death, 
that we could not repay. According to St. John's 19, we saw the levels of his suffering. The world viewed it then, Jesus' death, as a scandal and as foolishness. They mocked, they laughed, they jeered, according to 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 25. And I want to read it. 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 25 says this. For the preaching of the cross to them, to them that perish as foolishness. But unto us, say us, which are saved, it is the power of God unto salvation. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. It continues, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. The scripture continued, for Jews required a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks mere foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, hallelujah, and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than that of man. For we see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God, but God, but God, having chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, and God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Only our God, only a God like our God could have turned it upside down, inside out. And Paul is not finished yet, but he wants us to know. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden things, chapter two, verse seven, even the hidden things, the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Here is the verse. Which none of the princes of this world had known. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. I want to read it again. For which none of the princes, the wise men of this world, none of them knew. For had they known it, they would not have participated in the crucifixion of the Lord of glory. This is a signal verse. This is an important verse. Let me open this up for us today. The world considered it foolishness. They mocked, they jeered, they slammed their hands, they shook their head in despair. Some left the foot of the cross in sadness. Some left in gladness. But none realized that it was God's eternal plan to allow Jesus Christ to go to the cross. For in so doing, 
He redeemed all of mankind. Every demon in hell tried to stop him. Every devil, every prince of this world, every noble man tried to intervene. But blessed be God, the will of God had to be accomplished. It is the reason why you and I today can with raised up hands, standing on our feet, hallelujah, opening our mouths, say thank you Jesus for a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. The light of the world is Jesus Christ. All of us on the scene of the cross, spun around the mirrors at the bottom with tears struggling down their faces on resurrection sunday could now see the will of god the plan of god for man's salvation one such as you and i were redeemed had it not been the resurrection we would have no hope had it not been the resurrection the grave would not be open. The tombs that were sealed would not be opened. Had it not been the resurrection, come on church, the hope that we possess is alive, Peter says, this living hope. Hallelujah. And therefore I want to point out to at least five facts today that the resurrection did in fact happen. It's not something veiled of our human imagination. In several places, at several times, several different groups of people saw the resurrected Messiah. He showed himself to them. He allowed them to see it was the will and plan of God. The early believers understood his death as the fulfillment of of the Old Testament prophecies. They knew it. They understood it. It was now revealed to them in plain understanding. And so I want to point out one. In obedience to his father's will, this very passage, this very chapter, this very book of Matthew says in 1811, it was to fulfill God's requirement. Aren't you glad Jesus met it in its ultimate? It was not only the fulfillment to his father's requirement. It was announced by himself, Jesus. In 18 and verse 14, we see Jesus prophesied his own debt. I must go. I must go to the cross. If I don't go, the comforter will not come. He prophesied his own debt. But not only did that, uh, evil doers were able to prophesy of his death. 19 and verse uh, 18, St. John, the high priest says, Is it not so it was prophesied that one among us should die for the debt of the entire, for the resurrection of the entire nation? Evil men prophesied his debt. But even in his innocence, according to John 9 and 6, Scripture did testify that Jesus Christ, the righteous Messiah, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God, was to give his life up. And then did it not prophesy that he was buried in a rich man's tomb? According to John 19, verse 38, Joseph of Arimathea, in a tomb that no man was ever laid, freshly prepared, put down in storage. How prophecy came in line. Jesus was to die. All along it was the will, plan, and intention of God. You and I who are seated here, wherever you are watching and listening, you were and you are a part of God's eternal plan. Did he not prophesy in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 that the seed of the woman would one day come, Jesus the Christ, and he would yield himself to the debt 
of the cross for to bring forth life and life eternal that mortality would work inside of your body why what did your hands not raise your heads not lifted up your mouths not open in thanksgiving to god i'm no longer dead but i'm alive i'm alive in jesus christ forevermore on this resurrection day Tell all demons in hell. Tell all devil that because of the resurrection, I am too resurrected. Not just the body resurrection, not just the physical resurrection, but there is going to be a day for the third resurrection. Come on, celebrate him with me today. Hell has no victory over you. The grave has no victory. Oh, we are triumphant. We are everlasting. So the Bible says it this way. The appearance of the risen Christ, according to Matthew 28, verses 1 through verse 18. The first central to Christian faith is the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. By recording his resurrection, his appearances, and the many who saw him, we have empirical evidence. It's not a lie. It's a truth. It cannot be concealed. It must be revealed. Jesus is no longer in the grave. His bones are not there. He was the only man that we know. He got up from death and fold up his grave cloth. He was tidy and dignified. The angel testified, he is no longer here. He is not here, he is risen. The angel's message was the first testimonial. Jesus rose triumphantly from the grave. By this resurrection, the scripture tells us, if the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body, my mortal body. He shall quicken. Come on, there's a quickening spirit within us today. It's that life given spirit. Paul says in Ephesians, You who are dead in trespasses and in sin, hath he now quickened? Thank God for that quickening spirit. That life-given spirit, it has victory over pandemic, victory over epidemic, victory over plagues, victory over every disease. Jesus Christ triumphed over them all over 2,000 years ago. You have reason to touch your body, touch your head, touch your very being because resurrection power and life works on the inside of you. I'm alive, I'm alive because he's alive. I speak to every sickness, every disease, every malady, every sickness. Now and to come. Hell has no authority over my being. And so the Bible said there were those in and around Jerusalem. Mary Magdalene, according to Mark 16 and verse 9, and John 20, verse 11 through 18, Mary and the other Mary were privileged to see him. Aren't you glad that women were represented at his resurrection? Aren't you glad that they were the first messengers and evangelists of the cross? Bless God for our women. They are not cursed. Hallelujah. They are not in pain or in condemnation. Every woman ought to cry out. Shout. Glory be to God. For such a purpose were you born. Such a cause were you brought forth as a part of God's creation. The Marys were there. Hallelujah. Then not only they witnessed the resurrection, but the Bible said, and the other women, and the other women. Matthew 28 verses 8 through 10, and the other women. Don't you know that you fit to the other women? You are here now, but you were there then. Come on, 
women, lift your hands up. Worship the God of creation. Run with the victory message. Women have a stake. Women have a say. Not only were they at his birth, but they were there at his death, but they were also there at his glorious resurrection. Hallelujah. The future of every woman is bright because the other women were there. But also Peter, Luke 24 and verse 34. The Bible says Peter was late in getting there, but nonetheless he got there. The women saw him and announced to him, the master is no longer in the tomb. Peter had to see for himself, so he ran, though the others outran him, and he saw the empty tomb. He knew the day before they put him in, but on this day, he was no longer there. The news to the world is the empty tomb and the statement, he is not here, but rather he is risen. The hope of the resurrection, the hope of glory, the hope of our deliverance. Come on, praise God. This is not the end and this is not final. We too shall see him. We believe in his glorious resurrection. But the Bible says it this way, the ten disciples, Luke 24 and verse 36 through to 43, John 20 verse 19 through 18, the other ten disciples, they saw him. Their hands touched him. They handled him. They heard him. Without contradiction of men or of the world, Jesus the Christ but not only the ten, but to the eleven, including Thomas. Thomas, who said earlier, unless I can dip my finger in his wounds and touch him, I will not believe that he is the resurrected Christ. And Jesus said to him, but blessed are those who have never seen, but yet believe that he is the Christ, that he is the Son. Of the living God. We weren't there, but aren't we believers? Now our faith stands firm in the things that are, so that we believe to see and not see to believe. The eleven saw him, the ten saw him, Peter saw him, the other women saw him, Mary and the other Marys saw him. Mary Magdalene, out of whom he cast out. More than 10 demons, she saw him. But to the disciples, under any road, according to Luke 16, 12 through 13, Luke 24, 13 through 35, and they said, after seeing him and encountering him, did not our hearts burn within us liquid fire touched our hearts. We came alive. The witness of the Holy Ghost. It was Christ in our midst and we did not know until he revealed himself. May our hearts burn again as the hearts of the men and the Emmaus road. May we continue to keep the fire burning deep within our heart. May the lies of men not dull our senses that he is risen. And because he is risen, all other lies are under our feet. But those in Galilee, according to Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20, they also saw him. But what about the 500? According to 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 6. Can we go to 1 Corinthians? 15. Oh, I love the Lord with all my heart because he first loved me. I love him because when I was unlovable, when I was unreachable, he reached me. When I was distanced from him, he associated 
himself with me. I love him without any force from outside. I love him because every fiber of my being have now come to testify that Jesus and the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, took my sin, lifted me up, and restored me to life again. I love him because though death is a reality, but death has no victory over me. The second death has no victory over me. The first death is only for a time. So here is what 1 Corinthians says. 15 and verse 6. 15 and 6 says, After that he was seen of the above of 1,500 brethren all at once. 500 brethren all at once, of whom the greater part remain alive even until this present time, Paul says. But some are fallen. 500 at one given time. He then made fish and bread and he fed them. He says, come children, have ye any meat? And he gave them meat and he gave them bread. He's saying today to a hungry, desperate and thirsty world, have ye any meat? Come, eat of my body, drink of my blood and live. Rabo Sataba, there is hope, there is hope. He appeared to James and the other apostles according to 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 7. They saw him. James in 1 Corinthians 15 and 7 says, after that he was seen of James, then of all the other apostles and the last of all he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. Paul says, you can't tell me anything. I too have seen him. And so I could say in the same night, ah, in which he received bread, he gave thanks, and he gave to all his disciples, and he says, eat and drink. Paul says, as I have received of the Lord, I give unto you this very day. So that we, who are here and alive today can truly say by faith we have received our own visitation, our own encounter of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul also on the road to Damascus, according to Acts 9, verse 1 through 6, according to Acts 18 and 9, and 23 and 11, Paul said, I had my own encounter. And I said, Lord, 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 what will you have me to do? Men are still crying out today. My Lord, my God, and my King, what will you have us to do? Why are you here? Why are we alive? Why are we even bothering? Why do we lift our hands in praise and in worship? Why do sometimes tears come from our eyes? Why are our hearts overwhelmed with joy? Why does he put such laughter on our faces? Why sometimes not even our natural food can compensate for the overwhelming joy we feel on the inside? Why does it mean even if it is our life, we will not betray him or deny him? Why? Because one day we too have encountered Christ, the Lord, the King, and the Messiah. Another resurrection day, we are alive in the land of the living. Another resurrection day, no demons has any victory over us. Another resurrection day, all our sicknesses have gone. And Jesus is life and life eternal. Another re resurrection day, we have this living hope. 
that causes us not to be ashamed or afraid. Another resurrection day, all the contradictions of men we can say, he is alive forevermore. No longer on the cross. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph over his foes. Somebody said, crown him with many crowns. The Lamb upon the throne. Come on, help me praise him. I praise him because I'm liberated. I praise him because I'm emancipated. I praise him because I'm free. Free at last. Oh, blessed be God. I praise him because he is the hope of all humanity. The hope of the nation. I praise him because he is my deliverer. My sanctifier. I praise him because he's the answer to my nation's crime situation. I praise him because he is the physician and the doctor, the scientist, and the healer. That's why I have come today. Stand with me. The hope of the resurrection. Had he not been re resurrected, my worship would be in vain. My being here today would be an act of foolishness. So Paul says, we seemingly preach Christ, the suffering of the Son of God that brings hope to humanity. For us, the cross is not foolishness, but to the wise of this world, blessed be God, it is nothing. But to those of us who have tasted of the richness and the goodness of God in the land of the living, why would you raise your hand with me today? Raise your hand for your family. Raise your hand for a husband, a wife. Raise your hand for a child, a grandchild. Raise your hand for somebody today without hope. A hope that they cannot ashamed. One day, God condescended to the God of us, raises up us to the uttermost, granted us hope. Hence we can now see at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart rolled away. It was dear by faith, and I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. Once again, up the cross, at the cross. At the cross, there I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. Come on, saints! It was clear my fate, I received my sight, and now I am happy. Be all the day. We bow our heads in a time of quiet reflection with thanksgiving in our hearts, with melody in our souls. We reach out with a prayer to our bruised, wounded, hurting feel lost, insignificant, hopeless, despair, waiting to die, ready to give up because they have not heard. They do not know. Like the princes of this world that Jesus had to die. He came to die. His purpose was to yield to debt 
no debt could take him by force. No one could have killed him or crucified him. But he came to die so that we, you and I, might live. You have been transcended from one level of life to eternal life through Jesus Christ. How does it feel? What words enter into your mouth? What thoughts in the passage of your heart to express the sentiments of joy that you are feeling right now? I was guilty of debt. Sin had me bound. Hell and debt took me over. But when I cried, none on earth, none in heaven could respond to me. I want us to pray for a family member today. A grandchild, a son, a daughter, a relative that to the best of your knowledge is not safe. A backslider. A street person. Somebody contemplating suicide. Depressed, oppressed, suppressed, hungry for spiritual bread. Thirsty for the life-giving drink. Reach out to them in hope today. Stretch out your hands. Reach them with a prayer. Oh God, help somebody find their way home on this resurrection song. A thief, a criminal, a part of us. God's love reaches higher and deeper and wider. Oh, love of God that will not let me go. If I can help somebody, oh, Jesus, in this maze of life, in this conflicting world of negative circumstances, if I could throw out a net that will help somebody find their way back to God. Over 2,000 years ago, he paid the price. If I can avert another murder, Another gunman. Another stabbing incident. Oh, love of God. Oh, love of God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask Brother Edmond as we pray. Rabo Koshat. To sing with us when I survey the wondrous cross and which the Prince of Glory died. My richest gain I call but loss, my poor contempt and all my pride. I sense there is an anointing to break a devastating yoke over somebody's life on this platform today, be it Facebook, be it Zoom, but somebody that was about to give up, you tune in instead, not knowing fully why, but you are saying, there's something possible to happen in my life. Maybe you're just Surrounded by a cloud of darkness. But here now, God stretches loving hands. Over 2,000 years to be materialized in your life today. Can we help 
somebody with a song, with a prayer, with a word of encouragement. When I serve you, the wondrous cross on which the prince of glory died, my riches gain, my comfort loss, and poor content on all my pride. Forbidden, Lord, that I should boast, that I should boast, save in the dead, save in the dead of Christ my God. All the vain things, all the vain things that charms me most, Charmed me most as sacrifice them to his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet. See from his head, his hands, his feet. His hands, his feet. Sorrow and love. Sorrow. Such love, such love, and sorrow need. Our thorns compose, thorns compose. So rich a crown, so rich a crown. Where the whole realm, where the whole realm of nature's mind. Of nature's mind that were an offering, that were an offering of our too small. Love so amazing, so divine, so deep, demands my soul. Demands my soul, my life, my all. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. in our world today without hope that are desperate, desolate, and destitute, that in this service, at this hour, the Almighty God, the hope of all creation and of all humanity, would reach down and minister healing, grace, love, and peace in Jesus' name. Let's pray along. Oh, what a love. The love that brought you to the earth. The love that kept you on the cross. Jesus. The love that kept you in the garden of Gethsemane. Bow down. Alone. 
under torture from the powers of hell. When man's soul hung in the balance, Jesus, you saw me. Jesus, you saw humanity. And you knelt until your sweat became drops of blood. Love kept you in Pilate's hall. Love kept you when you were spat upon. Love kept you when the nails went in your hand. Love kept you when the sword pierced your side. Love kept you when the thorns were placed on your head. Love kept you when vinegar and gall was given to you to quench your thirst. You could have called 10,000 angels. You could have called 10,000 and thousands of angels. You could have uttered a word and dismissed all who are the foot of the cross. But love kept you until you said it was finished. Oh God Almighty, we bless you today that man's redemption was paid for. Lord God, for the man and woman in sin today, Ah, Satanaba, for the hungry, for the thirsty, for them that have no home, for the street walker, for the one that sits high but has a wicked heart, my God, for the one who knows not where the next bread is coming from. For the one whose body is racked with pain. For the ones whose soul is dark and dry. Jesus Christ is the answer. The risen Lord is the answer to Jesus. Come to him. Come without money. Come. Come without price. Come. Come and surrender today. Surrender to that love. Let him wash you today. Let him take your sins and let him give you his righteousness. We can't work for it. The price has been paid. That you too may live. He's no longer in the grave. He rose again. To is to be Invite him into your heart today. Let him love you. Let him take your guilt and shame. Let the kingdom of God come to you today. Let him raise you up from the bed of affliction. Let him raise you up to die no more. My God, my God. So for yebe katari yabasi. Sebebe yakandari yashoto basaya. 
This is not a religious service. We are calling into a new life with Jesus. We are calling you into an encounter with him. We are calling into your life with the Holy Ghost. We are calling you into a life with the Spirit of God. Throw off your grave clothes today. You are saying that my sins are too heavy. Do not let the enemy lie to you. Jesus Christ is Lord in all domains. The first born from the dead, Shabbatar Yesabai, and of the church, Sibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibibib